I'm very excited to introduce Wendy Sachs, who is a board member of one of our partner organizations, Plant Powered Metro New York, and a New York-based documentary filmmaker. Thank you so much, Nikki. And um, oh my God, a very warm welcome to um, Dr. Joel Furman, who is my mentor and um, was my doctor many, many years ago, and his um, lovely daughter, Talia Furman. Um, I've been asked to read the event description, so here we go. This is a fun-filled, I trust, session with father-daughter duo, Dr. Joel Furman and Talia Furman, which includes a demo from Talia's new cookbook, Desserts to Live For, alongside the science of eating for optimal health. A nationally acclaimed clinician, Dr. Furman shares the evidence behind a nutrient-rich diet to achieve long-term health benefits and even disease reversal. You'll learn secrets for baking that feature the surprising flavors of the plant kingdom. And as um, Nikki mentioned, this is being co-sponsored with um, Plant Powered Metro New York. Quick intro to Plant Powered Metro New York and then to Dr. Furman um, and Talia. Um, Plant Powered Metro New York is an organization, nonprofit organization here that empowers people to find better health and overcome chronic disease through whole food, plant-based nutrition. With the food as medicine approach, we offer education, build supportive communities, empower people to make lifestyle adjustments and organize and lead projects that spark changes to food policy, food culture, and food practice. So today it is just beyond my honor um, to introduce Dr. Joel Furman, who is a board certified family physician, seven time New York bestselling author and internationally recognized expert on nutrition and natural healing. His bestsellers include Eat to Live, Super Immunity, The End of Diabetes and his latest Eat for Life among many other great books and articles and podcasts and um, PBS specials and all, all kinds of things. We're so lucky to have him. And his daughter, Talia, who is the author of um, her first book, Love Your Body, and then her new book, Desserts to Live For. I have to tell you, I've been thumbing through this book and it's just, everything looks delicious. Um, she offers a mind-body roadmap to a simple vegan lifestyle, including desserts, and proving that loving your body inside and out can be delicious. So Talia, let's see, are you here? I am I here, so. can you see me? Yes, oh my gosh, with Petey. How yes, yeah, I'm pulling him for the time being. He's been a barker today, so uh, I'll hold him for a little bit and then I'll put him down. Awesome, and um, tell us what's on the menu for today. Yes, yeah, so I made um, one of my favorite easy recipes, uh, blueberry banana muffins with sunflower seeds and coconut flakes. And I wanted to share it because it is so fast and so easy and so delicious. And what I love about, and I'm gonna put Petey down here. What I love about my cookbook is that most of the recipes are pretty easy. And I have girlfriends, I have people who have purchased the book. They've tried the recipes and it, it really is showing people that they can do this. And, and it's just uh, takes just maybe even just a day or two of practice. And uh, they're like, wow, I didn't know I was a baker. And so I have these, um, I, they just came out of the oven. So I have to be careful not to burn myself. Um, and they're not as pretty as the pictures you see in the book. But if you can kind of see, I loaded them with blueberries and flax seeds and uh, almond flour and bananas and dates uh, were the sweetener used. So I don't know how much you can see, but it uh, it's even even if you can't see it that well, or even if it's uh, not like the 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 pictures in the book are. I made them so pretty, and you can make them pretty. You can make it fast. That's the beauty of baking. It is art. And uh, it's just, and the fact that you get to eat it, that was uh, such a joy for me with working on the book. I could eat <laughs> what I was working on. So. The food is always so delicious. I mean, when you're used to eating um, the standard American diet, as we know, and everything's so processed, um, sometimes you think, oh, what, you know, will blueberries actually do the trick for me? And, and they couldn't be more delicious. So the muffins look 
just fantastic. Um, will you be showing us how to make them as well? So I have my oat flour right here. I have almond flour. Um, that's the two flours I use. I use my computer me for a second. Uh, I, with many of the recipes in the book, I do use medjool dates. It's that my sugar substitution. And so I've got, I've got them right here um, and the blue, just everything. So, so I'd be happy to demonstrate and you can see how inc truly incredibly easy it is. I like to start with flax, the flax seeds because that's like the binding ingredient. It's the egg substitute, flax eggs. And so what I do is I take my one cup um, or even half a cup that I have right here too because I use, I usually I use like half a cup of liquid of some kind um, water, non-dairy milk for this recipe, either one works. Um, and so what you're going to do is just take two heaping tablespoons of, of ground, you want ground flax seeds, um, not whole flax seeds. And I put them right, I don't think I have them out. I'm gonna go get them for a second, but uh, I keep them in my freezer and they last forever in the freezer. And so it just, you don't have to keep going out and buying eggs too. I love that on a vegan diet or, or healthy baking, a lot of this stuff just lasts in your cabinet. Like the oat flour, the almond flour, it's just so nice to just have it on hand and it makes it a, like people think that eating this way is pricey, but when you're making your own desserts, it's often not the case at all. So I put in the couple ta uh, tablespoons of ground flax seeds, and then I have some fresh uh, water right here and you just pour it in a half a cup for every tablespoon of ground flax seeds. You're gonna want two to three tablespoons of water. It doesn't have to be exact. Um, it's gonna do the trick no matter what. Uh, you take a clean spoon and then you stir it you let it sit for a minute or so and just so it gels. And then you get to, I, I pit the dates. So let's say I pitted the dates, I put them in the food processor. Um, so usually what I do is the ground flax seeds and the dates first. And in this case, I'm using bananas. So let's say I put the bananas in my food processor, which is right over here. And then, so the liquids are blending first because that that's key. I don't do the flowers first. Uh, I do, I always do the liquid first. Let's just assume that it's all blended because I, it makes a loud noise with the food processor. So I'm not going to, you know, I'm just hypotheticals here. Uh, so once that's done, uh, I'm going to put it in the chat, the flax and what else is in the food processor, the dates and the milk. Yes. Yes. The pitted dates. Uh, and then also the bananas in this recipe because they're blueberry banana muffins. So it just helps, it's gonna help bind everything. Lovely. So, so after all of that is done, we'll assume that we have the liquid component. Then I, uh, for this particular recipe, I put in almonds, I put almond flour and the baking powder next. Um, sometimes it's gonna be easy to forget baking powder because it's, you know, you just wanna use a little bit to help the muffins rise. And then let's say if um, I'm using any other spices, like uh, if we have cinnamon or nutmeg for some recipes. Uh, this recipe didn't have spices, but it did have some uh, vanilla powder. So I guess that's a spice, but so I put that in around this time as well. So I put in the almond flour first, let that blend in with the liquid ingredients, and then I put in the oat flour. So I love these two flour combinations. Uh, and I love that almond flour, it's just ground up almonds. It's just, it's not like, and both are naturally gluten-free. Most of the recipes in the book are gluten-free. Uh, and so let's say we did that, then I put in the oat flour. So that we, let's say hypothetically putting on the food processor and these steps, super easy. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that batter and I'm going to put it in a big bowl. So let's say a bowl double the size of what's currently in uh, this bowl with the oat flour. So put that in and then you mix in your blueberries. And then it's literally that easy. And let's say you're using sunflowers, coconut flakes, um, any other healthy additives you want. If you want to add pumpkin seeds or just anything, you know, that is the beauty of this. You want to make it your way. When you're cooking at home, you're not at a, eating out at a restaurant, just make what you enjoy. So 
so that's that. You have it in your bowl. You stir in the blueberries. I loaded these muffins with blueberries because I love, I love blueberries. And, uh, and then I topped some of the muffins with blueberries. And then I used a clean And more about, it depends on how big the muffins, or how big you want the muffins to be. Judy, we've lost you. <laughs> yep, I'll go back. Okay. <laughs> Just a moment. But quick question, actually. Um, can you use oat, just entirely oat flour, and not mix it with the almond? And is it just a personal preference to mix the flours? Um, can you use one or the other? That's a great question. Uh, yes, you can absolutely just use oat flour. Uh, it is going to be a little bit healthier with the almond flour, but you can absolutely make it with, you know, if you have an allergy or food sensitivity, you know, feel free to substitute with more oat flour. And that will apply to any recipe in the book. Uh, you can, but I, I do like taste wise oat flour over, let's say coconut flour, or there's just other types of flours that you can buy. And uh, I just like taste wise. It's just, it does it. It does it for me and it's been the successful recipes with my taste testers. Um, excellent. I have a couple of, I have a couple of um, comments about this. <laughs> Go ahead, Dr. Furman, you're on. Okay, yeah, I just, we'll get talk more about eating in general, but a few comments about this dessert and what Talia's doing here. Number one, the secret ingredient to be absolutely clear is not vanilla powder, it's real vanilla bean powder. Vanilla powder is not the same as vanilla bean powder, which is real ground vanilla beans. And that is super healthy and it's expensive, but it's, it's so worth owning that and buying a bag of real vanilla bean powder. You can use it sparingly, but it really adds a richness and a healthy level to these desserts because vanilla beans are the, the real vanilla beans are super healthy for you. The next, the next thing is, is that, usually in these desserts, we're measuring at the amount of dates you use for sweetening are usually one, a maximum of one medjool date per serving per person. So if you're using six dates, you, you're, making, um, you're not making two servings, you're using 12 dates, you're not making six servings, you're using 10 dates, it has to be for 10 different servings. You follow me, you're not going over one date per dessert serving. And likewise, when we're making banana ice cream or banana, um, but adding banana to the recipe, it's usually half a banana per person. In this, des in this dessert, obviously, it's not a, a heavy banana dessert. But we make a simple banana ice cream with real vanilla bean powder. Let's say if you use two bananas for four people and you put the plant milk in and then you put in a couple of tablespoons of nuts of walnuts and macadamia nuts or hemp seeds, you have an incredible delicious vanilla ice cream. Four bananas, I mean, two bananas, four people, two servings, and the other answer about, it's important that the idea that Talia mixes grain flour with a nut or a bean flour, you know, that she's lowering the glycemic load of the dessert because so it's not all grain. There's something to cut the glycemic effect down and that slows the absorption of the sugar into the bloodstream. The whole key with regard to spiking your glucose with dessert is adding these secrets, the dates instead of sweeteners, you know, the, the bean and the, and, the, and, the, um, and the oat flours, the flours are whole grain or they're, and they're usually a whole grain, which is less, much less glycemic to processed grains. There's no white flour or anything like that in these recipes, but plus the addition of the, of the nut flour or the bean flour, which cuts the oat flour or the grain flour, further lowers the glycemic load, ease, making it less um, glycemically unfavorable. And don't... Um, you know, chickpea flour is super good too, you know, and lentil, flour, you can get all these things and just adding a little bit of these special flours in improves the nutritional quality of the dessert. That's such an excellent point. Um, it brings up my curiosity, Talia, did you, um, or Joel, did you proofread the book before Talia wrote it? I mean, before Talia published or Talia, did you ask your dad to go through the recipes or is this so ingrained in you having grown up this way that you just kind of knew what to do? I would say absolutely both. I knew what to do. That wasn't ever a question but he also looked over it just to confirm. 
Yes, and for those of you in the audience who, um, it's actually maybe the only book I've seen that has desserts where you can thumb to the back and find all the nutritional information, which is really a treat when you're, when you're looking to either watch your weight or simply be, be healthy. Um, and Dr. Furman, you were the first person who introduced me to this idea of bean, using beans for recipes, um, whether it's chickpea flour or talia. I know you, I, I know, not sure if you're finished with the, the muffin recipe, but I know you also have like a um, brown peanut butter yes. brownie recipe that you love. I definitely do. And I use the black beans in even like a chocolate cake. I try to use beans whenever I can. I have some chickpeas and like white um, cake recipes. The book has every, it's separated. There's a cookie chapter. There's a brownies, blondies um, chapter. There's truffles, there's cake chapter. Then there's the smoothies and ice creams, um, the muffins chapter. So there's 96 recipes in the book and anything you're in the mood for, you can basically find that recipe healthified. And that was such a, it was so much fun to be creative in that way. And I think so much of health is also enjoying the process of um, being creative. And so, you know, really being passionate about taking care of your health. And uh, I love that I could even eat these desserts for breakfast or, you know, it's just, they're that healthy, so. Exactly. But Wendy, you, you chatted in the box and you said something incorrect. Oh, go ahead. Correct you me. You said use vanilla powder. It's oh. not vanilla powder. That's a different, that's a, it's vanilla bean powder. Oh, sorry. It has to be the whole vanilla bean, the ground vanilla bean. That has the phytochemicals and the anti-cancer benefits. The rest of it's junk food. Vanilla extract and vanilla powder are just usually chemicals with a little vanilla in them and they don't contain the phytochemicals and the anti-cancer effect of the real vanilla bean powder. We're trying to, you know, I told Talia, you know, just use what's best so people get the full anti-cancer benefit out of the recipe. And we know it's a little expensive and people could use the other ones, but if they can afford the real vanilla bean powder, they should have some of that on hand. Excellent. And it tastes better with that too. Yeah, yes. it tastes so real too. You can't overdose it with it because it doesn't have that bitterness of that, that chemical aftertaste. Yes, exactly. Um, I love this idea, actually, Talia, that those, some of those desserts can be, you know, had for breakfast. Um, one of the questions in the chat is, has to do with the nut flours. Um, it's, it's, you know, it's stated as, aren't nut flours higher in fat? Um, Dr. Furman, do you want to explain the benefits of nuts and then therefore also yeah. using the nut flours? Sure. I mean, it's very important that people understand this concept that it's animal fats that are harmful and vegetable oils are harmful too when they put fat on the body. But in the lower consumption of nuts, in the, in the Seventh-day Adventist Health Study 2, which was such a important study because these people in the Seventh-day are not junk food eating Americans, they're people that are vegans, near vegans, flexitarians, pescatarians, act, they're all different degrees of either plant-based or near plant-based or minor amounts of animal products. And they monitored their nut and seed intake. And they found that in the lowest quintile of nut and seed intake, they had a 40% increased risk, actually a 39% increased risk of cardiovascular death compared to people eating more than an ounce and a half of nuts a day. That means eating less than a half an ounce compared to more than one and a half ounces had a huge difference in death, including longevity and cancer mortality. That lower consumption of fat in the diet when you remove the nuts and seeds increases your risk of death. It's the wrong way of thinking about it. Nut fats are healthy fats. We don't wanna overeat calories. You don't wanna snack on nuts. You wanna eat your, lim your limit between like one and a half to three and a half ounces a day based on your size and needs and caloric needs. But, but trying to keep the diet low in fat, there's not only no benefit to lowering the fat content of the diet, it actually is hurtful and dangerous to lower the fat content of your diet because you absorb 20 to 50 times as much phytochemicals from your vegetables, increasing your longevity from cancer as well. And these seeds like flax seeds, chia seeds, and walnuts have powerful effects to stabilize against cardiac arrhythmias, dementia, and cancer. 
So these are anti-cancer food and people should be increasing the nut fat content of their diet, not decreasing it. They should be decreasing other things that don't have such lifespan enhancing effects. And there's been 17 other studies that fascinatingly corroborates the findings of Seventh-day Adventist Health Study 2 showing they do this study and that study, this part of the world, in England and in Australia, and wherever they do it, they find that more nuts makes for a longer life. So, and we're using desserts here where we, there's a known amount of calories and dates and nuts in the dessert. We're talking about even people that are overweight could, a, could eat a half an ounce of nuts with every single meal, going, hitting that range between one and a half and two ounces of nuts a day is fine for an overweight person with diabetes. I might be eating three ounces of or nuts of seeds a day or four ounces or five ounces, but a person who's overweight may have to hold that back a little bit. And lastly, and so importantly, it's so important not to eat late at night. It's so important not to have three to four hour window after you finish dinner before you go to bed because it's a tremendous effect on your health, on your risk of cancer, dementia, and overall longevity to go to bed on an empty stomach, not to go to bed on a full stomach. That means these desserts come in handy because by finishing your meal with let's say a 150 calorie dessert, by, stop, by finishing your reasonable side dinner with a small dessert, and most of the time my dessert might be, you know, a half a cup of, of partially defrosted frozen cherries or a whipped or some frozen defrosted jackfruit or, some, or a fresh mango, or you know, probably three to four times a week I'm having some fresh or frozen fruit that I love, apricots, peaches, my, but, but two or three times a week, I have one of these really delicious desserts like, like Talia's designs that say, wow, this is really so fantastic. I had this tiramisu or whatever it's called. I had this you know, delicious blueberry muffin and I just had a piece of like a, but, and it marked my end of eating for the day. So rather than enhance my calories, it lowered my calories because I said, okay, I'm gonna have this big of a meal. I'm gonna have that reasonable piece of dessert. And Talia also showed me that you cut them into like, you cut up the cake or the pie into like 12 sections and you freeze it in each section in the freezer. So when you pull out a section, it's already pulling out a 150 calorie section, not a 600 calorie piece. But then I have that little piece of whatever, the, this delicious coconut cream, healthy thing she made. And then it says, okay, Go get out of the restaurant, shut it down, get away from the kitchen, clean your teeth, put the kitchen away and stay out and do something else for the rest of the night and stay away from food for the rest of the night. So it actually, so you can utilize this to really make sure you're not using desserts to overeat or to continue eating through the night. It's something that you do and it ends the eating for the day. I love that. I love the whole idea that that's the cue to stop eating and then ending with something sweet like around six o'clock or you know, that is 6.30, it's just, um, it is that kind of topper on the day and that's it. And it, I found it's amazing how much time I have at night now to get other things done before I go to sleep. There is a question about the vanilla bean powder, which is um, how much do you use as a substitution in recipes that call for the traditional vanilla extract? Uh, so it would be about uh, a teaspoon and a half. Uh, is what I use for a muffin recipe like this. Between for how muffins. many muffins? For this recipe, I'm getting between eight and 10. Okay. But the question is, well, in another recipe, if they asked for a teaspoon of um, vanilla extract, you would generally use a teaspoon of vanilla, real vanilla bean powder, a one-to-one -one switch, right? Basically, the answer- Or you go one and a half. Would you go a little more on the vanilla bean powder because it's natural? I would go more. The, yeah. You're gonna get more flavor the more you put in, I, you could even go with two teaspoons. When I'm baking, I, you know, for the book, I have to use exact measurements and it's great when you're a beginner to use exact measurements. But if, if I'm feeling like I want a really heavy vanilla muffin, we'll say I'll put two and a half teaspoons. Like it's just whatever I'm in the mood for. It just, the more you use, the more you're going to taste it. Yeah. That's what I do with my vanilla ice cream. I put four bananas and I put a whole tablespoon of vanilla bean powder in for the four bananas. That's for four people, that's, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, I do, but the, the four bananas is for eight people. You know what I mean? So it would be half a, half a tablespoon for two people for one, yeah, one banana would be two people. So I put it, but when I usually make four bananas, I put a whole tablespoon in of real vanilla bean powder and I put a quarter cup of nuts uh, into it and I put it like a, a third of a cup of plant milk and I whip it up into this fluff 
And that's usually the base. So I'm using a lot of vanilla bean powder, the whole tablespoon, but, that, but it's, for, it's for eight people usually anyway, you know, so that's still a lot of people. Um, Dr. Perman, there was a question also. I know you sell a vanilla bean powder on the website that is superb. Um, uh, is there also- Yeah, and you can always take out a, I mean, a, a mortgage on your house to afford it. <laughs> it yeah. <laughs> But it's a very large bag and I keep it in the freezer and I just right. use a bit at a time. So it actually, ultimately, I think will uh, balance itself out over years. Right, right. Um, question though, about a brand, you know, are there any brands in particular that you would recommend um, other than on your website that uh, some of The reason have? we sell it is because it's impossible to buy it. Every place, like I guess partially due to COVID and partially due to this, there's no organic vanilla bean powder. It's so unavailable and so expensive expensive because of supply and demand. The supply is so low that we found, we, we, seeked, we sought out and saw we could purchase some large quantity at a favorable price and make it available for people at a much lower price. Even though it's super expensive, it's still available through our website at a lower price than you can buy organic vanilla bean powder anywhere else. So it's just that we're kind of like doing the service for people. We're, we're bar batching it in a large amount at, a, um, at an organic farmer that we can get this and we can just get it out to people at a lower price so it's not so prohibitively expensive. You know what I mean? So if you can, any place you can buy it at a good price, organic vanilla bean powder, buy it. We just don't think you, people can get it at, at a price that we have it available for, you know? Yeah, that's awesome. And, and it's, yeah. hard to, it's hard to find. You can search and you can't find a place that sells it anymore, you know? Right. And just for the audience, you know, the bag is large and you really can put it in the freezer and, and keep it. Um, Talia, a question for you. It says that in the written recipe, you use vegan margarine. Did you use that in the muffins you made today? Uh, yeah, so that recipe is on my blog. And I started my blog back in 2012, so quite a few years ago. And there's just a few recipes on that website when I was first starting to bake and getting my foot wet and kind of like dipping my toes into healthier baking. I was still using some vegan margarine at that time. The cookbook does not have any recipes with vegan margarine, um, just to clarify, so. Excellent. And there's a private question that came in about the peanut butter black bean brownies. Um, peanut butter, okay, Dr. Furman, it's not technically enough. And then Talia, you wanna describe um, that recipe, which I know is a favorite. Well, the answer to the question is that, um, you know, you ever have those jungle peanuts? They're raw, they're so delicious. They're, you know, I see them sometimes. But peanuts generally don't taste good raw, but the jungle peanuts do. So peanuts, unless you buy them raw and then lightly roast them yourself, when you buy commercially roasted peanut or peanut butter, it's usually too roasted. So it's not as really healthy or you could say lifespan enhancing as the other nuts are that are more raw or partially toasted and not so darkened. But Talia is using a small amount of peanut butter um, as a flavoring and it's not, it's not her main nut or main part of her diet. On the other hand, the studies on it show that e even peanut butter has longevity protective effects compared to no nuts. So even though peanut butter is not the most favorable nut, it's still better to have some peanut butter than it is to completely take the nuts out of your diet because you need some of these beneficial fats to absorb other nutrients. And there's other beneficial ways that have stabilization effect on the, the um, irregular heartbeats and things like that. So even though peanut butter is not shown to be bad in the scientific literature, we know other nuts are more impressive and more longevity promoting. The nuts and seeds that are most longevity promoting that we want people to utilize a, like maybe a third to a half in their nut intake because they're so incredibly protective against cancer are flax seeds, chia seeds, hemp seeds, and walnuts. Flax seeds, chia seeds, hemp seeds, and walnuts, they're all high in omega-3 and the flax and chia are full of anti-cancer lignans. And then you have Pistachios and pecans are also excellent for your health and generally great things to add to your diet. Even avocado is good for you. And so we don't want people to have this fat phobia, but we do want at least a third of their nut intake to come from the high omega-3 nuts, a third to a half. So when you see a recipe that says cashews in it, take, modify that recipe by taking out some of the cashews and putting some hemp seeds in its place. They have cashews and hemp seeds. The recipe is calling for um, 
you know, pistachio nuts, then great, put the pistachio nuts, but add a little hemp seed to it. I'm always like modifying it to give me a, a better omega-6, omega-3 balance in the nut and seed department. Charlie, do you want to describe the recipe and, and, um, and let us know how you use the peanut butter and also the black beans, which will be novel to some people that um, how delicious those brownies are. Yeah, it's, it's really amazing how you can't taste the beans really at all. And it, it just like these uh, flax seeds here, they do act as an, a binding agent like eggs would. So I, I use a half a cup of beans in that recipe and the serving size is gonna be roughly 12 people. So it, it really, the texture of these brownies because I use the beans, while you cannot taste the beans, it does add like a really like melt in your mouth. Like you dig your fork into it. It just, it, I love the texture of it. Like I, yeah, it's, it's ooey gooey. It's so good. Uh, so it, it's actually got some similarities to the way that I made these muffins because you're going to start with the flax seeds. You're going to start with the liquids like the, or, and the sweetener dates. I put in the black beans first. I would put in the peanut butter first, get that liquid mixture going, and the wet ingredients, and then I would put in the dry ingredients and whatever spices I was using with the dry ingredients, you blend it all together. And then brownies are so easy because you just put them in the pan and you well, can, can I see- use a food processor or a blender with this? The, the food press with the S-blade or the yeah. blender? So I have it right here in front of me. It's oh, the it's a food processor. Yeah. Yeah, it's a food processor. So almost all of the recipes, except some of the smoothies, I use a food processor over a blender. Yeah, so that's, uh, that's basically the gist of the black bean brownies is you just do the wet ingredients and then you combine it with the dry ingredients. You mix it all together in a big bowl. Um, you put it in the oven and that's it. What about like an avocado icing? Do you ever put an icing on top of it? Oh yes, there are so many rest. So I have a copy of the book here and there's so many creative, that was the joy of this for me. Like I have, this is Tahiti brownies and I top it with uh, some coconut flakes and some walnuts. And you can see, you can see that picture. This is fantastic, but I, I love tahini. So that's like the peanut butter brownies are beloved, but there's just so many different creative ingredients. I use these are cashew cream lemon bars. This is one of my favorite recipes in the book. I remember when I made these and how delicious they were. Um, so let's see, but yeah, this is, I have oatmeal butterscotch blondies. I use maca powder to create the butterscotch flavor. It's incredible how you can use healthy ingredients to mimic the taste of less healthy ingredients. Uh, so, so yeah, there's just, we've been talking, as I said, there's 96 recipes in the book and I got a little fancy at times. I don't know if you guys can see that, but I created this one with a, a, um, a strawberry layer, um, which, and I got a little fancy. They're, they're incredible photographs. I mean, I have to brag, but, um, cause I, I took, did I take those photographs, Talia? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm sure there's credit for a lot. Um, <laughs> fudgy avocado <laughs> bars. Yeah. Photos, didn't you? Did you take the photos, Talia? Yes, every, yes, I did. I took the photos and that was the joy for me because I'm, I'm a creative by nature. I'm very artistic and I, I would put on some of my favorite like classical music or like just something to get the creative juices going. I'd have my professional camera and I'd put a background and I, uh, I, I got, I would take like 10 to 15 photos per recipe and then I'd pick the, my favorite photo and it was, it was a process, but very worth yeah, it. Work. They are beautiful. They really, really are beautiful. Another question from the chat. Um, uh, this individual would like to know if it's the same to eat the nut roasted or raw or if the nuts need to be activated before eating, I imagine that might mean soaked uh, before eating. Yeah, the, you know, we're always recommending to use raw over conventional roasting because when they conventionally roasted the soup at the stores, you buy it roasted, it's heavily roasted and the nut turns brown. But when you take some almonds or sesame seeds or 
uh, you know, and you toast them yourself in the toaster oven on the lightest bakes on the lightest cycle, or you just toast things like I'll blanch almond skins by dipping the almonds with the brown skin in a colander, in a strainer, into the boiling water. Now shut the water off, get it boiling, shut it off, dip it in there for 90 seconds, pull it out, dip it into cold water, and now I can take the skins off the almonds. But then the almonds are a little moist, and then you put them just one toast cycle in a toaster oven at the lightest setting, and it gives the almonds a little touch of um, color, just a little touch of color, but it's nowhere near the color of roasted. It's just like the lightly toasted, and it brings out the flavor. Even we make certain dressings or, um, or desserts where you use sesame seeds. I like use my orange, blood orange sesame dressing and I'll toast the, un the sesame seeds in a pan for just 90 seconds, just so they start to give off a little odor. And then I'll put half of them in the dressing and the other half I'll put on top of the salad. And you so much enhance the flavor of the sesame seeds and using those almonds for string beans, amandine or, or, or to some other thing you're gonna make them with. It's, they're so much better tasting when you just lightly toasted them. So, we're, so I'm saying in that, and the studies on this in the scientific literature shows that you do not lose the nutrients and even you even enhance absorption of some nutrients if you lightly toast the nut where it has a, a tremendously different effect between commercially roasted and you lightly toasting it at home. So the trick is if you wanna toast it yourself, don't roast it or buy roasted because the nut is not browned. It just enhanced the color and the flavor profile a little bit. You don't have to soak your nuts to activate them or to take away the tannic acid or the anti-nutrients, but that's okay too. You can also have soaked nuts and sprouted nuts and they're all good foods but you just don't get the heavily roasted brown nuts. Not that they're, not that they're so terrible, but you're not gonna get the anti-cancer longevity and nutrient bang of a real, of a nut that's closer to the raw state. Excellent, very excellent. Um, Talia, back to you. Was there a personal noteworthy um, experience that you had that inspired you to say, I'm writing a book of desserts? Yes, so my senior year at Cornell University, that university is extremely difficult. And my major was nutrition, which I took classes with a pre-med students, it was ultra difficult. The way that I would de-stress between exams or assignments was to bake. I, I've been a foodie my entire life. My dad knows this very well about me. And so I just started following food blogs. Food blogs were really have been pretty big since then and so I was just like you know put on some relaxing music just met it it's kind of my form of meditation and that's how it all started and I made you know it's funny because it started when she was five years old and <laughs> we would serve her lunch and she said this is a great lunch but what's for dinner <laughs> she had to know what was coming up next what was the next meal after this meal <laughs> The good thing you're my, you're you know, the parents I had are, you know, health freaks because I'm able to stay healthy, but I'm very much a foodie and I guess some traits you're born with. Yeah, it's all sounding good. And I think you're doing everyone. Um, we just heard Chef AJ, particularly on this holiday, you know, this is the holiday of Shavuot where um, many members of the audience and the community are, are celebrating with uh, dairy. And we'll get to that topic, I think in a minute. Um, but uh, to be able to offer something that's sweet, it's the holiday of um, the Torah actually, which is often likened to milk and honey, the milk and honey of being able to study these lessons. And so um, clearly on a whole food plant-based diet, we don't do milk um, and technically not honey, um, but yet there's a lot of um, that creamy texture we can get from soy products. There's a question in the chat about soy and maybe about other ways of getting that creamy texture and certainly a way to have uh, sweets with dates and all the fiber that's in the dates. So on the topic of soy, um, there is a question in the chat, uh, maybe for you, Dr. Furman, what do you think of using soy? Yeah, by the way, I, I could comment if I don't mind coming just a second, because was as you were saying dairy and honey, and I was thinking of breast cancer, ovarian cancer, diabetes and dementia, you know what I mean? Because obviously, 
the dairy and sweet um, habits are so deadly to a human species. Um, but in any case, we do, uh, people do so many foolish things that, that make us have such a high level of these dangerous diseases in the modern world. Um, getting back to obviously um, your question about soy is that um, soy has definitive um, effects on reducing risk of breast cancer. There's soy bashing by the anti-vegan meat-based community that create a false myth on the internet that soy in some way has some negative effects. And that's only true of isolated soy proteins or processed soy foods, not real soy beans. And by the way, soy milk and tofu are made just by blending soybeans and removing the fiber. So they're made from soy milk and they're relatively healthy, but the healthiest, most powerful way to prevent breast cancer is by eating real soybeans like edamame or dried soybeans that you make into a chili or add to your soup. But let me just say this clearly, that soy products like soy milk, tofu, edamame, tempeh, and tofu, those five ingredients have definitive effects in the scientific studies at lowering a woman's risk of breast cancer and even if she has breast cancer, decreasing the risk of recurrence and enhancing her lifespan because the genistine, the estrogen-like compounds in soy that bind to the breast don't stimulate the receptor and they actually block the receptor site from estrogen stimulation. So, like, so they lower estrogen exposure to breast tissue. They don't enhance it. On the other hand, soy products, the E2, the um, activate the E2 receptors on bone sites and they activate that receptor. They don't block it like they do with breast tissue. By activating the bone receptors, they lower the risk of, of um, osteoporosis with aging and encourage muscle strength and stable stability in your musculoskeletal system as you age. So soy is a fascinating and incredibly protective food that enhances your longevity by protecting against breast and prostate cancer and maintaining bone and muscle strength with aging. Plus on a plant-based diet, one of the most stunning and important findings of the last decade was that more animal protein in the diet led for more death, but more plant protein led for longer life. And that was occurred in all cohorts on people who ate animal products and people who didn't eat animal products that were vegans that as people consumed more high protein plant substances, they enhanced their lifespan and longevity. And they're, of course, we're talking about increase their healthy lifespan or play span and the longevity, their, their quality of their life improved and their longevity. And that means these foods that are high in protein that enhance your longevity that's coming out in the Seventh-day Adventist Health Study too, and corroborated by other studies showing the same findings. And those foods high in protein are soybeans, and hemp seeds, these things Talia's cooking with, flax seeds, of course, broccoli, florets, um, quinoa, Mediterranean pine nuts, sunflower seeds, all these, I must, I'm missing some high protein, oh, beans, and of course, other beans, like, you know, are high in protein. But that's what makes the nutritarian diet unique in the field of the plant-based eating because it's, it has a wide nutritional diversity. It doesn't try to cut the fat out or cut this out or cut, it's sure we're recognizing that greens and vegetables are incredibly important and people have to eat a salad every day. Matter of fact, I want people to eat a big salad, not in a little six inch soup bowl, but in a full nine inch serving bowl. You know what I mean? A full big salad, unless you chopped it up finely, you can then put it more in maybe in a soup bowl. But if you're not gonna chop it up finely into a chopped salad, it should be in a full size nine inch serving bowl. And then you should have a normal soup bowl serving a vegetable or bean soup with beans in it. And then a piece of food for dessert and that should be your lunch. And, and you know, so we're eating a lot of green vegetables of course, but then the, what I'm saying is the hallmark of this nutritarian diet is that it utilizes high in greens, lots of beans, lots of nuts and seeds, all these higher protein plant foods that give you protein adequacy with aging, fat adequacy, this idea of low fat plant-based is a misnomer, it's a myth, and it's a mistake. Anybody who says low fat plant-based 
has not been following the nutritional science over the last decade. They're, they're back studying, science, studying an opinion that people were given 10 or 15 years ago that haven't updated their thinking as the new research has emerged in showing definitive findings. It's not low fat plant-based for us. It's because we're not looking to make the diet low in fat. It's fat adequate plant-based. It's whole food plant-based. And of course, nutritarian sums it up which includes high micronutrient foods, including all the anti-cancer, the heavy anti-cancer substances, the G-bombs in your regular diet, greens, beans, onions, don't forget scallions, mushrooms, berries, and seeds, onions and scallions. Scallions are super longevity promoting. And we want people to put them on their salad with the red onion and eat it every day and have cooked mushrooms every day. So the lunch may be salad and soup and a piece of fruit, but the dinner, we eat more raw vegetables, maybe some raw carrots, raw jicama, raw kohlrabi, raw bok choy, raw snow pea pods, raw peppers, more, some raw, more raw vegetables with a dip, with an avocado dip, with a hummus dip. And then we have a cooked vegetable dish, you know, maybe on a bean pasta or a bean base or a bean burger or some extra beans on the side. Or a, but, it, but in any case, we have a, a vegetable. And then we can have this, you know, nice dessert or frozen fruit or tropical fruit or favorite fruit for dessert or one of these nice desserts for life. So we're, we're constructing a diet to be the gold standard of nutritional excellence, to afford people not just a slim waistline, but all these powerful anti-cancer effects and the full nutritional variety of all these foods give you a better microbiome with the full beneficial bacteria. You can't take a probiotic. It's not just getting a lot of one or two or three or four bacteria. It's having thousands of different types of bacteria in your gut, a full nutritional diversity that comes from eating a wide variety of foods in your diet. Mm. So we want different types of green cruciferous vegetables. We want a few different types of the onion family, scallions, leeks, red, you know, this, shallots. We want different types of mushrooms and we want different types of beans in the diet. And so when we, and we want different types of seeds and nuts. We're going for, so we're designing a menu plan to increase nutritional variety that's way and above what could be achieved by the blue zones. So the blue zones might extend the lifespan eight to 10, seven to 10 years, but we're gonna give people the opportunity to extend their lives 15 to 20 years longer, not over the average American, not seven to 10 years longer. It's, a, it's taking the science of the, the best part of all the blue zones and the best data from epidemiology and the best data from cancer studies and people with cancer, giving them food and seeing what allows them to live longer and prevent recurrences. And that's what my work's done over the years. It's idealized the diet to maximize disease reversal and to maximize disease protection, the protection against disease. Excellent. Um, there are two questions on two, I mean, a couple questions on two different tracks. One's uh, more the science and Talia for you. Um, how, what do you do for chocolate for somebody who has a chocolate craving? Oh, there's so many options. I use dark chocolate powder. You know, my dad has a great cocoa powder that dad, do you still sell that? Yeah, sure. Yeah, we have, we have the cocoa powder. There's just ample recipes in the book that are chocolate based and oh my gosh, um, I have a devil's food cake. Let me see if I can find a picture. Like I just opened the book to a random page. Walnut rum mocha cake. This is amazing. I love this cake, but that'll fix a chocolate craving. Uh, it's you know, a little cocoa powder, a little date, a little avocado, a little nut. The combination of the fat, the cocoa and the date, you know, we don't, she doesn't have to put sugar, butter, oils, unhealthy ingredients, dairy products, cheese. It can just, she's just doing it all with whole foods, not even with an oil, not even with flaxseed oil, but the real flax seeds, you know, gives you that creamy mouthfeel, you know, for the, you make an icing with cocoa powder and avocado and just a few dates mixed in, or so a few little so plant like milk, it's so smooth and creamy, and it's delicious. So yeah, it just, that's, I love that there's just, depending on how much time and convenience, you can just figure out like what you're in the mood for and still make it chocolatey. But I love this uh, espresso fudge ice cream. That was so good. Uh, so yeah. it's just, there's so many options. It in this looks book. impossible for that to be healthy. Exactly. It looks, too, it looks too good to be healthy. You know, it's almost impossible to believe. One we the ingredients, three fourths cup raw cashews soaked overnight and drained. One can coconut milk, uh, refrigerated overnight and liquid removed. That's actually, I'm glad I'm reading this recipe because there are select recipes that I do use coconut milk and I use it from the can that you buy, not the box. 
and then you want to put it in the refrigerator and not room temperature overnight. And then you would only be using the cream part because when it's refrigerated versus at room temperature, it's there's a cream that solidifies. So that's what helps create it. That's what helps make it look not good for you. Uh, and <laughs> uh, then I have uh, one and a half cups non-dairy milk, three heaping tablespoons cocoa powder. In this particular recipe, I use ground coffee, vanilla bean powder, medjool, you know, the eight medjool dates and two tablespoons arrowroot. So I do have eight servings for this recipe and I use eight dates. So it's only one date per serving. It's not terribly sweet. That's we have only about Wendy, when, when you're a nutritarian and you're used to eating these recipes that aren't quite as sweet as conventional recipes, you like them better. You can eat bigger portions with it with, without feeling like you're de eating something so decadent, but those heavily sweetened desserts that are like the sugar overpowers the palate, you don't enjoy the subtle play of symphonic flavors as much when you're off these sweet diets. Once you're off all the sugar and honey and maple syrup and stevia and xylitol and all these sweeteners, and you're having these desserts that are not quite as sweet, we've experienced, we like the flavor of them better. We can taste the other subtle flavors better. But even here at the retreat in San Diego, we have our four chefs making these exotic desserts at night for these people who are losing weight. They like them, they're not, not as sweet. They enjoy, they, these are, they love the dessert so much. And if a conventional person tasted them, they would say, oh, it's not even that hardly sweet at all. But when you're used to eating this way and you cut the sweets out of your diet, what I'm saying is your taste buds have the heightened ability to taste these sweet substances now. And now even a strawberry tastes better. Well, you can taste the flavor in, um, in romaine lettuce has more flavor now because you're not deadening the taste buds with the overuse of sugar and salt, which have an effect to give, which to damage people's taste buds over time. So we're actually strengthening the taste muscle and bringing people back their native taste so they can enjoy eating more, not less. That's so good. We have just a few more minutes. So I'm going to wrap many things into just the last three minutes. Um, a question about, well, it's a cheesecake holiday. And I know, Dr. Furman, you've got an amazing recipe with um, for pumpkin pie that uses tofu. Um, Talia, um, is your cheesecake use the soy or do you have recipes in the book that do use soy as well, like tofu? I have, I do have recipes in the book that absolutely use soy. For the cheesecake recipe, I don't, but I do have cheesecake recipes. So uh, here's my coconut cream tiramisu, just a little, that's, that's my favorite recipe in the book. So I asked it, I had, to, I had to mention that, but I'm looking, so I have, I have a vanilla blueberry cheesecake that's uh, raw, that's one, page 164 here, so. I'll interrupt you just because we have only two minutes. So there was a question about, are some of these recipes raw? Yes, the answer is uh, there are some that are no bake. Um, and then Dr. Furman, there was a quick question or a couple questions about foods and exercise for osteoporosis. Is there anything you want to quickly add on um, food oste and osteoporosis? Well, um, you, you know, we're talking about a nutritarian diet that has a lot of green vegetables and beans and seeds. So it's naturally high in calcium and naturally high in protein. It's the, it's getting the, it's a nutritarian diet gives you calcium and protein adequacy. And there was a recent study that showed that on vegans had weaker bones and more hip fractures compared to meat eaters because people were eating vegan diets. I analyzed the diet in the study. It was a low calcium, low protein diet, low protein vegan diet compared to the nutritarian diet, which gives you more protein and more calcium. It's not just vitamin D. We want to make sure people supplement with vitamin D to keep their levels above 30, between 30 and 50. And we want to make sure people do heavy exercising. And I recommend for people with osteoporosis to use the power plate machines, you know, to that vibrate in three dimensions as they're doing their exercises. I did it today. I mean, I'm for my skiing. I did my, oh, by the way, I'm going skiing this week and I'm going to, um, I'm going to Snowbird in Utah for my last, for my last skiing of the year. My last, but I still, I'm missing you, miss you there. But anyway, 
Oh, by the way, Wendy is an incredible skier. We go going down expert moguls and all kinds of double blacks. It's just amazing that she could do this with hardly ever skiing that much during the year. It showed, but, but anyway, skiing is great for osteoporosis. The vibration is great for building, getting your muscles and bones strong too. And, I, and it gives me, I, Wendy and I um, gives us something to look forward to, to train to, towards because I'm getting, I'm getting in shape and I'm working out because I want to be strong on the ski slopes. So it keeps me occupied with thinking about staying as strong as I can. But anyway, yes, you can do this. This program is gonna be great for you. Learn about it, go to drfurman.com and look at the power plate machines and, the, and what we recommend for osteoporosis, if that's your concern. Um, but this whole plan is, is about that. It's not just being a vegan, you have to do this the right way. That's excellent. Um, and on that note, I know we need to stop um, at exactly where we are now, 1125. Um, Dr. Furman and Talia, thank you so much. Um, a friend has uh, said to me that desserts are the way in on this. And so Talia, you've, um, you've given us uh, healthy desserts and hopefully we'll now pack everything else with greens and beans and onions and berries and mushrooms and seeds. I, I go to sleep and wake up with that mantra um, and cook like that. Um, yeah, thank you both so much for coming tonight. Um, enjoy your evening. Um, quick plug, Plant Powered Metro New York and the JCC are often doing educational programs together. Uh, we have a men's health um, initiative coming up in June. And um, we have, uh, gosh, I think I'll have to check the JCC website because I know we have something on the microbiome and uh, health coming up as well in uh, May and June. Oh, we have a cooking class with our beloved Chef Carol this coming Sunday. All um, whole food, plant-based, no oil, no salt, no sugar um, cooking. So please join us. Dr. Furman, Talia, thank you so, so much. Really appreciate it. Thanks for having us. My pleasure, sure. Bye-bye. Thank Bye -bye. you.